So, renovate. Why renovate? Uh, it's messy, it's noisy, it's uh, uh, disruptive, but maybe you have some damage to uh, address. Maybe you re recognize that you need a little bit of a refresh just to stay competitive, uh, recognize your competition out there is doing it. Maybe you're bold enough to undergo a culture change, uh, which is uh, impressive. Um, but why change? And why change culture? Those of you that have been involved in culture change um, understand that it's uh, no small task, that operationally that uh, there's kind of a, a lot that goes in, into uh, addressing your staff. And there's a lot of pushback uh, when, you, when it comes to truly doing culture change. So why do that? Uh, well, we know that change is constant. We recognize that. We know that five minutes from now, we'll all be slightly different or more uh, advanced than we are today at this moment. Uh, and it's just a given. We understand it, we recognize it, we live with it, and it's, on the whole, something that we uh, kind of live with. Uh, is change bad? Could be. But more importantly, or more, more often, change just provides those uh, detours that have to require us to sort of rethink what we do, maybe uh, find a better way to reach our ultimate uh, vision. Um, and, but that usually is, is a method of improvement. Um, and change, I think, on the whole, we can agree is good. Uh, I think uh, it's an evolutionary process. It's uh, an opportunity for us to improve ourselves, to improve the lives of others. So we embrace change, right? It's okay. Um, and good, bad, or indifferent, though, change is uncomfortable. Uh, what I'd like you to do right now, if you could, just all fold your arms. Just oblige me for a second. This won't hurt a bit. Uh, and just keep them folded until I tell, until I tell you otherwise. So a short case study, um, a sissy house in Aston, Pennsylvania, 40-year uh, facility, 160 years of religious tradition, steeped in tradition. Uh, the Sisters at St. Francis, um, they do a wonderful job of delivering care. They're really compassionate about their fellow sisters. Uh, and they provide just unending care, except that they do it in this facility. And they recognize that they can't do this any longer. It's just not appropriate. So what I'd like you, you to do right now is fold your arms in the opposite way. A little awkward, a little uncomfortable, right? So it's an, even a minor change like that is most certainly uncomfortable. So we take a look at facilities like this, and we take that very same space. You're looking at an image now of, of what it is today, that very same space. So we take the spaces that were previously dedicated to staff. We convert them and bring them back to the residents. We open up corridors. We make the spaces more expansive. We allow greater visual access through those spaces so that you can see them continually through one another. You can see the activity that goes on beyond that, but they're more dedicated to the residents. What you see in the lower left hand is what's left for the nurses to come down, touch down, do their work. We have ample spaces like that, but that's where they do their work. Um, at a sissy house, space was not a problem. They have ample space. Unfortunately, a lot of it was um, kind of ambiguous, right? Uh, nondescript, uh, dimly lit circulation, not so great. Um, so we took opportunities to, to create careful insertions, create more intimate space, allow those spaces to define activities that, that are more specific and less ambiguous so that people actually feel good and know what to do in those spaces. Quiet, reserved, public, a little bit more uh, varied. Um, as opposed to spaces that just kind of uh, flowed in the way that they just did before and they could become any space for any, anyone at any time, really ambiguous, right? You go into those spaces, you're not quite sure what to do with them uh, and not necessarily serving your purpose. Uh, we added quite a bit of uh, natural daylight with some skylighting, so that certainly helped, but essentially made the spaces warmer, redirected some of the traffic, what you see in this slide is uh, a, a new entry sequence, which allows for greater security. And this in particular, this small space, is a little bit of a public-private uh, transition uh, for guests. Uh, and created some spaces that are like home, a lot more spaces like home, like your country kitchens. Uh, again, you can see much more open space into the corridor, so that the, the spaces are visually and physically accessible to the residents. Residents can come here now and fend for themselves, take care of themselves, take care of their fellow sisters. So what goes into a renovation to support greater culture change? Uh, the ingredients are, first and foremost, leadership. Uh, the leadership was steadfast, strong, they were determined, they were unwavering in their mission, and this was our charge, to remove all the hallmarks of a medical model. Um, and, that, and that actually helped to create better teamwork. Uh, there was a lot of hand-holding required. Uh, the leadership had to be very clear, open with their dialogue with their staff uh, and to make sure that they had the buy-in uh, to create and stay on course. Um, there was quite a bit of pushback and as you can imagine there are actually some folks that are no longer there. 
Uh, the way we did this initially was to create a multidisciplinary team. We didn't go in there as architects, which is what, uh, what I do as a vocation. We didn't just start moving walls around or designing. We created a multi multidisciplinary team to sit and interview staff and residents alike. And most certainly, we included the residents. Residents and staff buy-in, which is what we have here, is where the rubber meets the road. And we all understand that until you get this, you haven't reached success. Uh, so thank you. That's my presentation. Thank <laughs> you.